Hi, I'm here with Dr. John Curry, and this is uh, Dr. Tim Green. And Dr. John Curry is an assistant professor from Moorhead State University in the Department of Foundational and Graduate Studies and Education. He is also the coordinator of their EdTech program, and he was good enough to do a second interview with me, and we're going to talk about his research in one-to-one -one iPad implementation in a high school. And I just think it's such a hot topic that I asked him if he would talk about what he's doing with this, what he's found so far, where he's headed, and just enlighten us about his research on one-to-one -on -one iPad implementation. So thanks again, John. Welcome. You bet. You bet. Thanks. So if you don't mind, just uh, it's, I mean, it truly is a very hot topic, one-to-one -to -one iPad implementation or mobile device implementation. So if you don't mind, so how did you get involved with this? and um, then go into what you're doing with your research. Well, um, <clears throat> as you know, sometimes um, it's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> I live by that. <laughs> um, really, I was walking down the hall uh, here in, in the building where the College of Education's at, and somebody goes, hey, can you come here for a second? And I walked in, and, and there... Uh, she was, it, uh, Krista Barton's her name, she's the director of the 21st Century Education Enterprise here, which is kind of the, an outreach. Um, they do professional developments and run a lot of grants and stuff with, in the schools. Mm -hmm. um, and she said, can you come, come in here for a second? And, and sitting with her was a guy by the name of Kermit Belcher, who is now, he, then he was the district technology coordinator, now he's the assistant superintendent um, at Mason County high school for Mason County Schools up in uh, two counties north of us right on the Ohio border and uh, they started explaining that that Mason County was going one-to-one -one with these iPads and uh, I had gone and done a professional development there they'd asked me to come do a professional development and I had talked about like Edmodo and stuff like that with them um, <clears throat> but they were like we've got to figure out you know, the, the school board's decided to do this, and they're, you know, investing $800,000 plus in this. Um, we have to give them some data on return. What would you do? And so mm -hmm. I sat there for a second, and I was standing by a whiteboard, and so I said, okay, well, I would look at this, and I would look at this, and here's how I would measure it, and I would do this and this. And I filled this whole whiteboard, and I turned around, and they were like, okay. <laughs> do you want to just do that? And yeah. I was like, Okay, and so, and uh, you know, um, so got the IRB together, and uh, and so we're in year two of data collection right now. Um, our IRB covers six years, and so we're in year two of data collection. So basically, <clears throat> Mason County High School um, decided they tried to get they uh, Kermit Belcher uh, tried. He's a doctoral student here at Moorhead State. But he's in the other. We have two tracks in our doctorate right now. He's in the P12 administration track. Okay. Um, uh, but this is his uh, part of the capstone. His capstone had to do with the one-to-one. -one, but he tried for four years to get funding for this, mm -hmm. and um, uh, you know he couldn't convince the board. Finally, had enough data and enough stuff. Convinced the the school board, and so they have taken all of their textbook money, and it. They're not buying any more textbooks, and they've bought everybody iPads. 800 plus iPads have gone into the high school. Okay. One high school to how many high school? One high school. Let's go, okay. County high school. Um, that's how we roll in this part of Kentucky. County high schools. Um, so, um, so it's 800 um, iPads in the high school. Every student gets them. Um, Last year it was rolled out. Uh, like I said, this is year two. Um, they have two levels. Uh, they have students who can take it home mm -hmm. or day users. They have to pay, I believe it's a $40 fee to be able to take it home with them. Um, and, what does that cover? Uh, like their cases. and It's, it's, it's a, level, a level of insurance. Okay. It doesn't cover, like, everything, you know, minor stuff. Uh, but... Uh, I would say there's only, I think, in the high school total, maybe 50 day users. Everybody just pays for it. Um, before they get the iPads, they have to complete the 
digital driver's license um, uh, to to show the you know to go through all the ethics behind having having a, a device there with them. Um, and uh, the, I think the thing that that really showed a lot of foresight on the district's part is uh, they knew they were going to go one to one fall of last year. So that would have been fall of what are we in? Thir uh, fall of twelve. They were going to go mm -hmm. uh, one to one. So they started in spring of twelve. At the beginning of the previous year, all of the teachers were given iPads at that point in time and started professional development on the iPads. Mm -hmm. And they were to, they took them home over the summer, had PDs before. So, so they, the teachers had them for months ahead of time rather than getting them on the same day as the students. Very smart. Um, we went up, we did uh, professional developments on different types of apps with them that they could use. The school um, is very heavily, heavily, uh, uh, the, the overwhelming majority of the teachers use Edmodo to manage like kind of document stuff in their classes. Um, and you know, Edmodo's got a pretty good app to be able to do all of that. Uh, but we also went up and we did some instructional design PDs with them where they sat by departments and redesigned their curriculums um, to try to be more more effective having these new tools in their uh, possession to be able to use. And then we also had for some of the, you know, because when you when you go do something like that, you inevitably you can look around and there's two or three teachers that are just like, this isn't going to work. Right. You know, and so um, we also took those people individually back to their rooms and worked with them individually on their needs and what is it that they need to do. So we uh, and and we were contracted to do that through the 21st Century Education Enterprise. So the district was really smart in how they rolled this out. Just really smart. A lot went into it up front to prepare the teachers for it. Um, and then at rollout last year, the first day, I mean, the news was there, local mm -hmm. politicians came in. I mean, it was a huge deal. In every classroom, it wasn't just the teacher sitting there handing out the iPads. They had somebody else there. You know, I went to one classroom, to a science classroom, and was there and helped hand out the iPads. So they made a big deal. I wanted the kids to know this was a big deal. Yeah. So... <clears throat> The question is, I mean, of course, when they came to me and they said, we need to see if this has an effect on learning, I had to stop them and say, okay, well, let's talk about what a media study is and why we're not going to do a media study. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and we, we can't measure that. And uh, so we talked about what we can measure. What is it that we think we can see? And so we decided, we decided to look at motivation. Mm -hmm with the hypothesis that if they are more motivated, um, then they should perform better, right? Mm -hmm. So what we did, um, and, and we're not getting into the individual classrooms, and we're, we're, we're looking at how the school overall is performing. So last year at the beginning of the year, all 800 plus students took, were using the MSLQ, um, as our motivation measure, um, motivation uh, strategy learning questionnaire, I think it is. Um, it, it's nice because you can, it's designed so you can choose which questions you want to use, and the questions are broken down. So it, it's, not, it's not one of these measures that, that you have to give all of the questions. They've built it so that you can, so that you can customize it to your needs. And so we chose that one, and, and out of there, I don't know how many questions. We we are using about, I think, 42 questions is what, what it is. So last year we did pre and post over the whole year um, on the MSLQ, and then I go up about every six weeks or so and hold focus groups over the course of a day. So in the, in the high school, they have what they call the rewards room, and it's – it's like going into a diner. I mean, there's posters on the wall, and you know, there's a, a 
big high top tables and stuff. And so if the kids are good, they get to go in there and just you know kind of hang out and stuff. So I go into the rewards room and I um, they bring me in four freshmen and I talk to the freshmen for a while, generally about thirty to forty minutes. Then the sophomores, the juniors, and seniors, and uh, so. Uh, I've been doing that for almost two years now. I've carried that into this year. And it's, you know, very in it seems informal to them because I just kind of start with how's it going? What's happening? You know? And it's been amazing to me the type of stuff that I get out of them. You know? I'm now I have some certain set questions that I always ask and my favorite one to watch their faces on is when I go, So what's the new way to cheat? <laughs> and they're what like, that? they're like, I want to know this. What? And I'm like, of course, nobody at this table cheats. But <laughs> let me tell you what I know. And I start listing off, and their eyes get really big, and they're like, wait a minute, this guy knows what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, so just tell me, what's? And so the fact that I've been there for so long, and I know so yeah. many of the things that have happened, has it, it gets me to get them to to open up, right. you know. Um, and so, uh, uh, it, it's been a, it's been a really interesting project. We also have somebody who goes, not me, uh, one of the ladies that works at the 21st Century Education Enterprise as well. She, when we were doing the professional developments there to get ready, she was a the science, one of the science teachers at the high school, mm. and we hired her away. Yeah. And so before the one to one implementation happened, so she goes and does the teacher focus groups, okay. the individual with the teachers, and I do the students. So what, um, what are you finding here with motivation, with the students? What are you finding? Um, not what I wanted. Okay. <laughs> um, we ran the stats last year for the for the pre-post, um, and first thing is, you know, we were really excited to have an N of 800. You All know, right. that was going to be great, and it ended up that we only had like 80. Because um, when they administered it, they did it through Survey Monkey, and they brought all the kids in the library. You know, and the teacher was in there. They didn't watch the kids, right? Mm -hmm. And so some kids, we didn't, we could not match up their pre and post scores by an, yeah. any identifier, so we had to throw it out. So we were only able to identify about ten percent of the students who took it mm -hmm. to be able to say to use. You know what I'm saying, yeah, right? Of course. Yes. And so that was a little frustrating. So what we've done for this year is we've taken the 74 that are still in the school as either sophomores, juniors, or seniors, and we've made sure we dropped it to only 200 this year overall to administer, to, but we've made sure we've got those 74 in there okay. so we can try to follow them as, as long as possible, as long as we can identify them. Um, but uh, we actually found – Everything was negatively. Everything that was statistically significant was negatively significant. Huh. So they were less motivated. Uh, all of these type. They had a, a worse view of their learning because of it. All of these things, and we were just like, "What? Are you kidding me?" Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, you know, but the way I looked at that first year's data was this: you know, the rollout, as well prepared as they were for it was still clunky. I mean, there a lot of things happened that first day. They were not, they had tested the bandwidth because mm -hmm. they their bandwidth is unbelievable at that school, but they had tested the bandwidth, but they had never had 900 people hitting it at once. Sure. And it just went, whoa, bogged on them. And so they've had to open that up. And so some of those things, um, uh, I think, kind of, are telling in the data that we saw. Sure. I'm, more, I'm much more interested in this year's data to see what, what this year's data says. Definitely. What 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 did you find from interviewing the teachers? What is there anything that jumped out from talking with them? Yeah, actually, actually, what the, here's the most interesting thing: the teachers' concerns. And I went back and had a, and had another PD with them at the end of last year because the teachers kind of were going off saying they're everybody's playing games and. And, you know, it's hard to keep everybody on task and, you know, exactly what you would expect to hear. Sure. And and I was able to stand up there and say, you know what, your concerns are the exact ones I hear from the students. 
Hmm. The students are concerned about the exact same things. When I ask the students, what what's the biggest problem we have? They go, man, everybody plays games in class. You know? And it's really hard if I'm trying to pay attention when I look over and he's playing Flappy Bird, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I start watching him. And uh, the, that's been the most interesting thing as far as uh, the, the qualitative data, the interview data we have, is that teachers and students have the exact same concerns. They want to be able to in, uh, integrate it effectively. They're still trying to find out what that means. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, the, and we've seen a big shift in the teachers this year. Um, the teachers are understanding that I think last year they had the opinion that they had to use it every day right. for everything right. and so and again I think that affected last year's data they were trying to force it on everything mm -hmm. and the, and the um, information that I get from the students this year is the students have noted that the teachers seem to make a lot better decisions about when it's appropriate to pull it out and so that makes that's making the students feel more comfortable about it um, I still think that they're based on what I'm hearing there's a, a lot of what you don't want is what's still happening a lot is that it has become in a lot of classes still just a glorified notebook sure you know they just open up the notes app put their notes in the notes app and the students like that they're able to do file those and you know, and, and search them and everything, but they're like, you know, I could just write this in a notebook. Yeah, um, exactly. So, but, but the teachers, you know, I think are looking for management solutions and then specific you, content solutions. Have you addressed the issue? I mean, that's, I think that's a very interesting finding that the teachers' concerns from last year were the same as the students. What, what, what's been done about that? Is, is, is there a good, I mean, that, and I, that's a concern of, I hear all the time with dealing with one-to-one -one, uh, implementations of uh, of students being off task and that sort of thing. How did you deal with it? Um, well, I've kind of when I when I've had the conversations with teachers, um, I've kind of turned that on their ear a little bit because the other things that the the students are saying um, and that I had never considered because I asked the students about are there discipline problems? I mean, what's happening in class and yeah. And uh, last year they had a lot of discipline problems, um, like with uh, uh, instant messaging and starting fights, and you know, and everybody's filming the fights and stuff. And um, <laughs> but this year they haven't had that. They haven't had that at all. Um, but uh, the thing I say to the the thing that the students have pointed out that I've then brought to the teachers is is the students say, but you know what? So and so who used to always distract us all, and the teacher would have to stop everything because he was acting a fool he's on, he's over there just distracting himself now huh, we don't have to we don't have to deal with him anymore yeah. and so the, so so the students and and I thought that was a great observation that I never would have considered so yeah, sure. when I when I talk to the teachers you know it's I I tell them this you know I sat through a half, way too many years of college and uh uh and there was plenty of times that I looked like I was paying attention to what was being said, and in my mind I was on the golf course right. or something else. Yeah. Um, so, you know, my my kind of philosophy towards it is is we do the best that we can, but we don't give up. You know, right. if one teacher has, uh, and her room was already set up this way, but she uses it to her advantage now. She has mirrors on all the walls, and so yeah. it doesn't matter where she's standing she can see what people are doing right um, you know what I hate to hear is that some teachers just uh, and it's very few have them come in and just put their iPads away yeah yeah you know or plug them in on the wall um, but there are other teachers who have gotten you know uh, we hear a lot about the one math teacher who has taken advantage of having the technology and completely flipped her room Sure. So students listen to the lecture at night for the next day, and then they come in and they all work on homework together. And she's able to That's individualize awesome. stuff. And you know the students are trying to figure out. They're like, "Well, I hate it when they do that." And I was like, "Why? 
well, that's not how it's done. And I'm like, says who? Yeah. And so you would rather sit at home and do homework and not have help? Well, I've right. never thought about it that way. Yeah. Well, it's just, a, just another thing to think about. Uh, yeah. So they've got some – so I think we're seeing – there's always going to be a range of integration. Right. But um, we're seeing some really cool things starting to happen, I think. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, so I want to end with uh, one last question here, and sure. um, just talking about advice in general for those who are contemplating a one-to-one -one or one-to-X, whatever. I mean, one-to-two, one-to-three, whatever. Uh, mobile device implementation, either a school level, district level. What what are the what are the top things that? And I can kind of guess what you're going to say, but you mentioned some of them already. But what are the top pieces of advice you have? Someone plan, plan, this. plan, and plan. Plan it ahead. I tell you that all the professional development they did for the teachers beforehand was so powerful, in my opinion. I mean, that's by far, I think, the biggest thing I could say. Number two, um, and and it's and it's one of those things I think that will work it out is uh, we have to redefine what's supposed to happen in a classroom. You know what it looks like in a classroom. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, because there's so much power um, with having knowledge at our fingertips and a lot of times the teachers uh, and the students themselves are afraid of the teacher losing control. Students are afraid to have the world opened up. They want to just be fed and I'll give you back what you told me. Sure. And so one of the things that I'm saying that, that that I'm reporting back to the administration this year as I listen to year two um, because I hear the students saying, well, you know, it's okay. Um, I like this. I don't like this. Um, is I think that w the, the district did a great job prepping the teachers for what was going to happen and why, but the students were never sold on. Mm. They, they figured that the students were just going to be happy to have an iPad. And so that's the thing that I'm pushing them on now is, okay, if you're getting ready for next year, why don't you do something at the beginning of the year that explains, here's why we do this, you know, and um, and this is what we expect, you know. This is how this is going to work here. So um, buy-in from the students, I think, will yeah. – because it is more than just letting them use their own – it's more than just pull out your own phone and do it. I mean, it's, it's a powerful tool that – Everybody's got to know how to use. So those are my two big things. Excellent. I appreciate it. So when uh, you're in, so you said you're in year two of six years. Are you? What's planning on getting this out for publication? Sometime? I am. I'm finishing up the article on year one. Awesome. Okay. Right now, um, and uh, I presented it last year at AECT. I've got a proposal in for year two, and then a comparison of the two for this year at AECT. Um, but we're finishing up the year one article, um, and then we've got a second article started that is a comparison of the focus groups mm. between the two years. So this year's sophomores, what they said this year and what they said last year's freshmen, comparing yeah. the trends as they as they mature as students. Great. We look forward to uh, seeing those in print and learning from what what you've done. So thanks again, uh, John. I appreciate your, your time in the second one, and uh, you've given us some good things to think about and some good advice. So I appreciate it. All right. Thanks. You bet, buddy.